Today on The Grid, we're talking about 10 post-processing mistakes that are killing your shots. My guest is French superstar Serge Remily. Plus, we've got Worldwide Photo Walk News, we've got some cool giveaways, and it all starts in just 60 seconds. Grid is brought to you by Tamron. Check out their 28 to 75 millimeter f 2.8 lens. It's for Sony full frame mirrorless. It's awesome. Go to Tamron-USA.com. And Westcott. Check out their new Rapid Box Switch. It has nine light modifiers and 13 quick swap light inserts. Check it out right now at FJWestcott.com. And Profoto, the light shaping company. Check out the Profoto B1X. Power in all the right places. Go to profoto.com slash US. And Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to another live episode of The Grid. My name's Scott Kelby, and joining me is French superstar, cool Frenchy guy, Serge Remily. Serge, welcome back. Merci beaucoup, Scott. How many times is this for you now on The Grid? Third or fourth, I forgot. It's not enough. Anyway, we're glad you're here. <laughs> Very glad to have you. We have a great topic today. Uh, today, I'm going to be sure I read it right. I'm reading it off my topic thing. 10 post-processing mistakes that are killing your shots. And we are going to look at a whole bunch of them. So that's what we put together. And I'm going to be, we're, I'm going to do a couple tutorials. We're going to show you just a couple of things. But these are the things uh, that we see commonly. You have people sending you a lot of stuff for critique. Yes. And you see a lot of the same mistakes again and again and again. Absolutely. I actually could give you like the top five that I see is missing in what I'm getting every week. And I get about 100 raw files a week. Because I do, I have like every Thursday I do webinar, people yeah. send me raw files and I retouch their files. Ah. And, uh, and so, anyways, we can tell, well, tell me when I'll get I started. I will fill in the other top five. Let's go ahead and start. So, all right, give me, give me one of your top ones. So, well, the main mistake, one, there's something you said to me about 10 years ago uh, that really, uh, I, I, I really got it. And that was that no matter how nice the place you are, it will always look better at sunrise or at sunset. You told me that about 10 years ago. And, and so that's the mistake number one. Like, I get these photos of raw files and people are like in amazing places, like they're in Big Sur, California, and you know, the, you know, the MC Wayfalls. And, and it's a daylight photo, it's like an afternoon photo. I'm like, why don't they just stay a couple more hours and, you know, and get the sunset, especially right. in that place because the sun sets like right on the right. And uh, so I can see it because when I import the raw files, I, I, I have them as like a thumbnail. And I can see it's mostly daylight photos. But honestly, in the 16 years I've been doing photography, that happened to me maybe five times, where the afternoon clouds, you know, bit up what I could potentially get at, potentially get at sunrise or sunset. So, you, you know, this is interesting. I mean, this is what we're telling you, this shooting it in good light. Yeah. It's not like some big industry secret. Like this has been around forever, right? So I have a guy that comes to me and does a one-on-one -on -one portfolio review at Photoshop World. We sit down, I'm looking through his book and he, and he gets to a shot. He goes, now, Mr. Kelby, I'm going to show you a shot. It was taken in broad daylight. And I know that you think that's not a good time to take care, but take a look at this. And he shows me the picture and he goes, what do you think? And I go, it's not bad. It's middle of the afternoon. It's not bad. And he's like, see? And I said, but all I can think of is, how good would this have looked if you had actually shot it at the right time? Yeah. If you had been there at dawn, if you had been there at dusk, this would have been an amazing shot. Mm -hmm. So what instead you have is a good shot. That's yeah. not bad. But I wouldn't put it in my portfolio. And, and not, not that it was a bad photograph. It was photographed correctly. His, his composition was good. Everything was good except for the thing that's so important, which is the light. Yeah. And, you know, I just finished a book on Los Angeles, just a little thing. And so it took me four years to do it. And I only shot at sunrise and sunset. So I have an app called Sol, S-O-L, where I have the exact time of the golden hour and the sunset. I just I literally, you know, I work and I only go at these times to shoot. And it forces me to, uh, I mean, it's not every sunset is going to be nice. But when you do cityscape and landscape like I do, it really makes a difference, you know. The only time I kind of go earlier is when I go in the Alps, in the mountains, because it's so high that it's hard to get a good sunset. But even like a low afternoon will still give you like longer shadows, just a more complex, a more nicer light. Sure. So that's the number one thing that I see. Can I interrupt for a second? Sure. 
I got a copy of Serge's book yesterday. He was kind enough to give me a copy. Now, you've done beautiful coffee table books on Paris. You've done New York. Mm -hmm. Los Angeles is not the easiest town. No. Nope. His shots are amazing. It will make you go, I've got to go to Los Angeles. <laughs> he, seriously, there are things in there that I cannot even believe are in Los Angeles. I mean, you're, you did such a beautiful job. I want to get a copy of the book here on the set. I, it's actually on my desk, but my desk is over in my office. Well, I'm sure somebody maybe can go grab it. Maybe somebody will. Maybe somebody <laughs> from our staff that's watching instead of working <laughs> will perhaps pick up that book sitting on my desk. It says Los Angeles in big letters, um, <laughs> but it, it is an absolutely beautiful book. And when and when you do a beautiful book on Los Angeles, you're a hell of a photographer. Well, thank you so much. Because it's not like you're working with Paris or New York, yeah. you know, which are some of the Paris and New York are some of the most photogenic cities in the world. I think London's a very photogenic city. And of course, when you start getting into Italy and France, I mean, come on. Yeah. Right? But Los Angeles, you don't think of as this is a beautiful, I can't wait to go there and shoot until you see his book. And then you're like, all bets are off. Yeah. So uh, hopefully we'll get a copy of it here. It's really, I mean, it's my experience also of really shooting at the right time. It, it, it's, and I, it's funny because I keep telling you, like, uh, I, I remember, uh, I, I tell this story all the time, but the first time I got into photography, um, I, I mean, I, before 2004, I never shot a photo in my life. And literally overnight, I was on vacation in Guadeloupe, and, and, um, and Kelvin Pimo, who is like my best buddy, showed me Photoshop. And then he you know, did something with a photo, and it, I was trying to do something artistic with my life at the time. And it hit me that one software, Photoshop, Lightroom didn't exist at the time, and a camera, I could create stuff. So I remember coming back to Paris and, and I was looking for books on photography. I bought like 12 books. The only one I could read was yours. And, and, I, and I'm really serious. That's how we met actually, because I was an APP member at the time. And I remember all my life, like I finally, after six weeks, figured out how to get a good night photography that was not blurry. You know, like working on a tripod, two second timer, getting it right. And so here I am in Paris, and I start at eight o'clock, and I go up to two o'clock in the morning, shooting Paris by night, the most beautiful city in the world. And I, I, I do all these shots, and um, actually I actually have a copy of, of, of photos there, and all the skies are black, like all the skies are black. And the next day, so I, I was not a professional photographer, but the agency I was working on had a professional photographer. So the next day, I'm like super pumped and happy. I'm like, you gotta look at my photo. I shot photo, you know, Paris by night, it's amazing. And I start showing him all these photos and I see he's not liking the photos at all. And I'm like, what's wrong? And he looks at me and says, all your skies are black. And I'm like, yeah, and he starts showing me a shoot he did in Morocco like four days before, beautiful blue hour, sunset, golden hour. And, and I'm like, he says, that's how your skies should be. You know, you have nothing in your skies. That's how they should be. And I'm like, hmm, that's the book. And um, <laughs> that's the book on Los Angeles. And so he tells me, you know, it starts showing me all these beautiful skies. And, and, I, and I tell him, I said, yeah, but then I could have only taken that one photo that day. I couldn't have stayed up to two o'clock in the morning shooting photo in Paris by night, all night. And he looks at me and he says, welcome to the world of photography. <laughs> and and it totally hit me, you know, and that's, so that's ever since that, then Scott said, you know, added like, no matter what you look at, it's always gonna look nicer at sunrise and sunset. I mean, and, and yes. This, is, this stuff is just beautiful. So, where can they find this? Is it in bookstores? Bookstore, Amazon is probably where you get the best deal. Uh, I don't know how they do it. Amazon's always cheaper than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they are cheaper. So, yeah. go to Amazon. It's called Los Angeles by Serge Romilly. And just an app, you will be stunned. You will, you will come on the grid and go, hey, Scott, I was watching a few weeks ago and I got Serge's book and it was everything you said it was and more. It was absolutely stunning. Okay. As soon as he gave it to me, I had to sit down and look at it and I'm just like, where are these boys? <laughs> I've been going to Los Angeles for 25 <laughs> years. So we used to do Photoshop World in Los Angeles. And I, I love Los Angeles. I've always thought it was a, a, a fascinating city. There's so much there. Hey, so um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one. Cool. I, I got some examples for you. Now, I want to warn you before I show you these images. These are going to burn your retinas. I'm going to show you <laughs> some HDRs. I went through a bad stage with HDR. It lasted only a few weeks but I was destroying images when I first learned HDR. And I'm gonna show you some images now, and I'm not proud of these. I, I don't know what was going on here. Now, some of these you're gonna see, I, I'm gonna show you 
the wrong way. I'm going to show you how to fix it here in a minute. So let me just see. I've got some other shots here that I want to show you that are that are equally as bad. Those are okay. It, those are not even done yet. Look at this. Now, in here is one of the biggest mistakes that people not make, not just with HDR, but with just over-processing in general. Yeah. Do you see the white glows around, like, the doors of the helicopter? First, can you even tell it's a helicopter? <laughs> That's how much I over-processed it, right? Now, I just want to let you know, this was like 10 years ago. <laughs> And this is when I was just learning, and I thought that's what you were supposed to do with HDR. I thought you were supposed to squeeze the, the life, the living life out <laughs> of your photo. But those white glows that you see, I see those every day, to this day. I see them all the time. We see them when we do the, uh, the cr blind critiques. I'm sure you see them again and again all and again. Uh, you see them on like horizon lines and things. And this is a warning that you have gone way too far. Now, there are times where you'll be processing and you... You want the look of the photo, but you don't want the glow. And in those cases, there's a whole different technique, and I've shown this on lightroomkillertips.com, is how to fix the glow. But basically, you're gonna have to either go back to the original image, because sometimes you can use the history brush and, and paint it back in, depends on the photo, or you have to clone the glow away. But the glow cannot stay. Mm. Glow is bad, glow bad. <laughs> and you can also have, besides not white glows, you can have dark glows. You can have dark glows around things. Um, sometimes with small objects, like if you have a big church and there's a little you know, statue on the top, you can get a bad glow around that, stuff like that. Mm. So I, I, look at this one. Ooh. Avert your eyes. Avert your eyes. All right. Look at oh, this. Yeah. What the heck was going on there? I, That's I, a beautiful composition, though, but... Well, thank you, Serge. It's, yeah, it's all nice except for the picture. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, these are all the bad things that you don't want to do with HDR. So I, what I'd like to do is I, I grabbed a couple of photos, and I'm going to – I have two right here. And what we're going to do is – and this is uh, uh, two stops underexposed and then two stops overexposed. I'm going to take these photos, and this is – I just grabbed this real quick right before we come on the air, not like the best example. but it's From I'm gonna, Hong Kong, no? Yes, from Hong Kong, from on the ferry Hong that goes Kong. from Kow Kowloon to, to Hong Kong. I'm going to go and I'm going to go edit in and we're going to open it in Merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. So Photoshop has this, this filter that is designed to make your photos look awful. Um, <laughs> and it does combine your HDR, but it does it in a painful way. So we're, we're going to go ahead and do it here real quick. Yeah, and it's funny. I mean, I've been using over HDR, and if you you know if you go light on it, it you, that's what I like about it. The engine is not so bad. Now, when you have it set to thirty-two bit, it, it can be glorious. Yeah. But we're not gonna. That's a whole different topic that I covered on my blog last Monday yeah, and I, this I saw Monday. Yeah, the article. Yeah. But we're gonna take it to uh, sixteen bit, regular old, and local adaptation. So this is where you go to make it look like bad HDR. Now, in the pop-up menu here under presets, there is a preset up here called Scott 5. And it's in your copy of Lightroom, not just, I mean, Photoshop, not just mine. It's called Scott 5. Hmm. And you notice there's Scott 6, Scott 7. Those are, those are in mine. Scott 5 is in yours. And, and what it is, is that was the fifth preset I ever did. <laughs> and Adobe said, can we put it in the program? And I'm like, sure. Because anyway, it, it, now when I click on it, it's going to look bad. Now, sure. that was be one reason it looks bad is because this edge smoothness was not invented yet. Mm -hmm. After they put it in, the next version of Photoshop, of, they came in and said, we need to turn on this thing that smooths the edges. Look how much better that is. That's See all the, all the burnouts and the highlights and stuff? All goes away. But it's, it's a very punchy HDR, yeah. right? It's, it's very punchy. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, click OK. Let me, uh, if I can reach OK. I can't even reach it. It's off the screen. So let's, if we hit return, will that do it? Yeah. All right. So we're going to go ahead and render this really overcooked HDR. So what you do is after you overcook it, because there are some good things here. It's surrounded by bad things. Yeah. So what's good? I love the texture on the on the, the on texture the, on the walls in some yeah, places. On the, on, on the, the floor. Whole rusty floor. Really and remember. the rusty floor is really good. <laughs> yeah, like and, and the city in the background is awful. It's just a mess. Yeah, and the water. I don't like the water. Right. So what you do is you would go back. I don't have the actual image file. I'm going to have to use one of those too. But let's say that I went to. Oh, you're going to paint back in? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to see if I can lower the... I don't think I can lower it enough with the... Uh... Won't take the underexposed? Oh, no, there we go. Oh, that's pretty good. 
that's not so bad. So now this is the regular photo. We're not doing HDR. I'm just kind of trying to fix the regular photo. So what you do is you take a regular photograph, right? And, and it would be the normal exposure, mm -hmm. which is actually on my desk. I left everything on my desk today. Select all, copy it, and you paste it on top of your awful HDR. Now, you notice that they don't exactly line up. So yeah. you just select them both auto and align. choose auto align. Yeah, that's really important. Otherwise, you're going to get like a, a ghost effect. Yeah, it, it won't be in line. You got, you got to have it lined up. You will have to crop the photo after you're done, but that's, you know, mm. no big deal. It wasn't like a great composition anyway. Look, it's lined up perfectly. Perfect. So now what you do is you're going to do the best of both worlds. You're going to hold the option key on Mac, which would be the alt key on Windows. Hide the real version of the photo. Then get a paintbrush. Here's one now with a soft edge. And you're going to paint the realistic stuff back in where you want it let me change oh i'm on the vector mask nice sorry yeah and that's a really cool technique because you get the contrast between softness and sharpness you know contrast does just done it's not just about light dark and, and black it's also about lots of details not so much details that that, that almost brings back a haze uh, in in the back it, it, compared that's, to like that's a very that's, re, that's really it's re, cool it's real haze yeah. because it's it's smoggy there but you're going to go through the image and pick areas that just look weird and wherever they look weird you're going to go and just paint them in until you have a, a mixture of the both now unfortunately i didn't have the the normal exposure i thought oh i just need 200 two over and then i'm like yeah well, that actually no. looks cool because i love the haze over there the uh, i love haze in photo i'm a, like a huge haze fan you are so. a haze you, you like purple haze though don't you yeah all right, so, so this is, while not a great example by any stretch of the no, imagination, it gives you an idea. And I have another example that we'll look at later, but it's time for a break. Hey, before we go to break, I just want to mention Friday, which is like two days from now, on the 21st, I will be in Washington, D.C. with my Lightroom seminar. I've got over 300 photographers already going to be there for the day. Why don't you come out and make it 301? But it's actually more than 301 already. <laughs> but anyway, come on out. It's, it's my last Lightroom seminar for the year. I'm moving on to doing a Photoshop seminar. But it's my last one. It's at the convention center downtown. We're going to have a ton of fun. So go to kelby1live.com. Come out and spend the day with me. And it will be, you know, I just found out just right before we went on the air that the shark pixel herself, Christy Shirk, is going to come out. And oh, she'll be there as well. That's shark so cool. in the house. So uh, I hope that you guys will come and spend the day with me on Friday in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. Tomorrow, I will be shooting an after-hour shoot in the Library of Congress. What? Yeah, it took about a month to get the permissions worked out, but we did, and they're gracious enough to let me go in and shoot in the main reading room and some of the other areas once the, it's closed to the public. That's so, so cool for your amazing book of the, uh, the Great Inside. Yeah, The Great Indoors. Indoors, The Great Indoors. I'm very excited about it. So Love anyway, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we got some shout outs because Moose is in the house. All right. All right, Moose. Stay with me, Moose. When you need a tripod that is compact, that is portable enough to take with you anywhere, one that is adaptable to any situation, that will prove versatile enough for any shoot, and is compatible with your other gear, giving you freedom to create your own perspective. Look no further, Platypod Ultra does it all. Visit platypod.com for more info.
This segment of The Grid is brought to you by b h Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, we're back. Wait a minute, the jib's not moving. Something's wrong. <sighs> Here's the jib. What all a right, setup there here goes that, There goes the jib. Yeah, all I right. I feel like in Hollywood here. It's like, <laughs> what a set. It's unbelievable. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you, sirs. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm here with Serge Romilly today. Cool Frenchy guy. And uh, we've got some shout-outs here. Kevin Scott says, hi, Serge and Scott from wonderful... Wisconsin, Wisconsin, land of cheese. Moose <laughs> is here and says, hi, gang. Moose. <laughs> Gord's here. Hello from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Jeff May says, hi, all. Warden says, howdy from the Signal Hill. Debbie says, hello from Indiana. Cheeky Nando, all the way from Portugal. Says, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Bonsoir, Serge. Bonsoir. And hello, Scott, from Portugal. Piotr's here from London. Hey, Piotr. He says, hi, Scott. Hey, Serge. Deb says, hi, all. Jeff's here from Houston. Oh, uh, no, Joe's here. Sorry, Joe's here from Houston. Johan from the Netherlands and Pernil's from Denmark. Everyone's all over today. Yeah. And uh, Tom likes your laptop pick. Yes. Thank you. Well, it's, uh, it's the view from Notre Dame that I climbed with Scott a few years back. That's how we met. Yeah. Highly, highly don't recommend climbing. <laughs> Have a helicopter drop you at the top because... Yeah, it's very narrow stairs. It's very narrow stairs. stairs. It's dark, and it takes. <laughs> took me four weeks to get up there. Jaspal, Jaspal says, ask the question, what kind of cameras do you both shoot with? Monsieur? Sony A7R3. Sony A7R3. Very nice. It's got a killer sensor. It's got a killer sensor. It's, it's got a killer sensor. It's a little lightweight. When I, I made it fall a few times, it's not as well built as Canon, but it's it does. Uh, it's <laughs> it explodes when it hits the ground. It explodes. Yeah. Not, not, honestly, I think that's the main downfall with all this mirrorless stuff, because it's still three thousand two hundred dollars, and uh, I, so now I bought like a whole. I have like a whole metal thing a cage around it, you know, to protect it. But apart from that, I love the photos. You heard it here first, folks. Sony cameras are junk. And that's from <laughs> Serge right there. That is not uh, what I said. I sh I, it's not what he said. Uh, he said you just have to buy a metal cage to put in it. So that's, it makes... That's all. So, and what's weird is you bought the Sony AR7 III because it was small and lightweight, and then you just have to put a metal cage around it. That's right. <laughs> I love the whole Sony thing. I shoot a Canon... Uh, what do I shoot? A 5, 5D Mark IV. 5D Mark IV. Thank you. And you can drop that thing off a semi. <laughs> It'll keep shooting. Anyway, uh, we got lots of stuff to, to show you here. Um, I'm waiting to hear from our crew if, if our thing is working. Is it working? Got anything? Anybody? Two minutes. Two minutes. All right. So I, I, I want to finish off on my, oh, my gosh, everybody's here. Bob Esch is here from Mumbai. Paul's here from Australia. Anna from Ireland. Asa's from uh, Stockholm. Stockholm. We got the international. It's because you're on. You pull the international oh, people. Thank you. They're thank like, you. Serge is there, wherever we are. Because Serge, Serge's name, the word, the phrase Serge Ramali means love in 33 languages. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, I wish I made that up. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let me real quick look. And uh, so the, the example yeah. that I gave so that, you. That's a big one. The other one, you know, the five mistakes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Give me yeah. your other mistake. And I'm going to cue this up while you're working on that. Well, really quick, uh, if you see my screen, this is one of the nicest sunsets I've shot in about 12 years while doing photography in Paris. And the thing is, it's really hard. I mean, I don't know if it's really hard, but apparently a lot of people have issues with getting the right you for the sky. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, you know, if you change the, let me see, hold on. Uh, let me go here. I have to close this. Let's talk white balance for one second. The thing is, you know, sometimes you can go to like, for example, Cloudy and, and Magenta, and, and I'm a huge Magenta fan, but a lot of people, you know, will do something like this. You know, they will add a Magenta and they will add Magenta again, you know, in the sky, something like this. I see a lot of skies yeah, like purple, this. Yeah, purple, very purpley. So on this planet, I have not yet to <laughs> Here we see go. a sky that's like this. Uh, I love Magenta. People even call me Mr. Magenta, but I never go that far. And um, so, or the, I see a lot of that, or I see a lot of that uh, here. Uh, a lot of blue and green skies. Let me see something like this. Or oh, hold on, I have to change the white balance. You don't see a lot of green. I do see some. Like no, no, this. I mean in the, in the sky. No, you don't see a lot of green. <laughs> and so, I, I just want to give you a little quick tip when you do uh, when you do sky uh, correcting the color of your sky. I have a formula where I like to go because. For me, like most of the, of the sunset I see goes from blue to warm, okay? You still have a bit of blue, you still have a bit of warm. The problem is that a lot of people go to shade, they go to shade as a white balance, but when you go to shade a white balance, look what happened to the blue. 
It's all kills, gray. It kills the blue. It kills the blue. So yes, the photo is warmer, but I'll give you a trick. If you stay on daylight, okay, you, so you preserve the blue, and then you can work. I even go crazy sometimes. I, I go nuts. I, I make a little gradient, you know, lower a little bit the exposure, maybe add a bit of blue, but not too much because, like, I see a lot of blue sky like this. That's yeah. way too much. You just don't want your sky to be gray, I, and I get that, you know. But then what you can do is locally bring back the warm with a nice radial filter, you know, like that's over where the sky is supposed to be. You know, you invert the filter, you, you feather it, and then you can add back. It's called, like, white balance on stereo. You, you're, like, retouching, you know, locally your, your thing. I'm even going to lower the exposure to make it brighter. Because, you know, when you lower the exposure to something, you make that color more vivid, more saturation. Yep. So, anyway, now it goes from blue to warm. And I'm just saying, so the super purple or super green or two blue sky, even that sky, I think, is too blue. And one thing is, I'll give you a trick that has saved my life more than one time. Your eyes is going to adapt to your retouching. So here you are retouching that sky, and then you think you nailed it, and then you go and do something else and come back 10 minutes into it. And you're like, oh, my God, it's too saturated. Oh, my God, it's not enough saturated. That's because your eyes adapt. So the best, if you're doing color photos or sunset, do a daylight photo. Do some black and white. Go watch some TV. Come back before you post it on Instagram. And then you will really have a better uh, balance of colors. It's all about balance. You know, it's funny because the thing I was going to talk about next is about balance. So No the way. Thing, and, and, <laughs> no, seriously. So the thing that... that that I'm going to be talking, and this is another one I see a lot, is just simply a photo where the color balance, the, I mean, sorry, the light balance is off. And, and if you take a look at the image I have on screen here, this is, this is a tip, typical of what, what I would see. And this, is, this really makes it look snapshotty. Part of it is, look how bright these poles are, mm -hmm. the columns are in the front. Not only are they bright, but the white balance is off. Everything else is kind of warm and red up here, and these almost are turning to blue. This part of the room is dark. You've lost detail. This is part of the room. And, and can I tell you, while, while we as photographers don't, we don't really, we're, we're very anti-HDR, and I think I showed you the reason why a few minutes ago. The public loves, and here's something they love, and I want you to keep this in mind when you're post-processing your images. The public loves to see detail. They love to see in the shadows. It's when you go too far, it looks weird. Yeah. But the public loves to see stuff like, like, ooh, that looks really interesting, you know? Like, if you go in, into a submarine and you shoot in, like, a U.S. Navy submarine, mm. not an active one, but one that a museum or something, <laughs> it's very dark. It's always dark. There's a little light here, a little light there. When you open up the shadows in there, people are like, oh, you can, and they'll say you can see every little thing. The public is really drawn to detail. So in this photo, take a look at it on screen here. There's, there's a, lot of, a lot of issues. You've got the, th this is too dark. These are too dark. This is all too dark. This is too bright. The floor is too bright. It's just, and, and you have a tool to fix these. The adjustment brush was made to balance the light in your photos. And, and when you do it right, it will go from a snapshot to look like a well-lit photo. Yeah, absolutely. In this photo, the thing that I that strikes me the most is that the eyes go to the brightest part of the photo, like naturally. Right. And like I'm stuck here? on these two columns. I'm like and here. And that's the only thing I can see, and I'm not appreciating, you know, the rest. You know, also not appreciating that it's got leading lines leading to you where you should look. I know. But it's it's the light is killing this shot. So what I would recommend to do is go to whatever Lightroom or the camera raw filter because I just happen to have it open here, and you're going to paint with light. So you're going to paint with a the exposure turned up here, and what your the, the goal is? So what's my goal? Balanced light. So I'm going to brighten this side. I'm going to super brighten that area in there, and all this in here needs to be brightened. I'm trying to lead you down to look at this. All right, we're brighten this side. And you're going to have to multiple do multiple times in here to brighten that. Yeah, so sometimes I use new. like four or five different brushes on, yeah. on a photo. You're going to have to get in here and brighten this, and that's not going to be enough. Hmm. So let's go in here and brighten it up. And I'm doing a sloppy job because if you make a mistake like I just did where you overpaint, you can hold the Option key on Mac, which would be the Alt key on Windows. Go. I didn't mean to paint the yellow. I just want to paint the Alter and all that. Hmm. But up here, you got to get rid of this, this brightness. you got to hit New and try kicking back your highlights. Yeah, and it's really cool to uh, 
add brushes on the top of brushes. Sure. It, it really works really well. Oh, it works tremendously well. It gives you that build-up effect. Mm. But this whole front, everything's kind of overlit. And look at this over yeah. here. It's way overlit. So look, even me taking the highlights down, now they just look blue. So people don't realize you can paint with white balance. Now I'm painting with just yellow. I zeroed everything else out, and I'm just painting warmth. So we're painting in these columns. They're still too bright. Let's bring them down. But you can see where I'm going. And just like Serge used that, that one of my very favorite tools uh, that he used is that radial gradient. And their radial tool is amazing. It's here in Camera Raw, too. And I would want to almost put a spotlight of light right there to bring out that area. And, and, and we're just working on this for a second. But you can kind of see. Let me get rid of that. Move the uh, turn off the overlay. We've got a long way to go, but you're already starting to balance the image. It's it's got a lot of work. Oh, yeah. it, it needs a lot of work. No, but, but, it, but it's getting there, mm. and and you can see what what will happen with a few more minutes work. But it definitely needs a few more minutes. Hey, it's it is break time. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back. Uh, Serge is queuing up an image here that I want to see, and we're also taking your questions. And we have a question for Serge waiting when we come back. Stick around. We'll be right back here live on the grid. Don't go away. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free, and we even have a special audio-only version, too. So sign up today. Hey, everybody. Scott Kelby here with cool Frenchy guy, Serge Ramelli. Bonjour. Hey, you notice, if you ever, guys ever watch our commercial for The Grid, like we have a commercial, it starts with you. Oh, That's Yeah. It. I said, and you said, bonjour, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Bonjour, ladies and gentlemen. Now, are you really French or not French? I am French, but I do speak the English language. Yes, really you down. do. Like, a, like an American, you do. Yeah, down south. Yeah. You know, been going down around for a long time. <laughs> Sorry. I love it when French people fake English. What are you talking about? This is how you speak normally. <laughs> That's not how you speak. You speak like you're speaking here. Yeah, it's right. somewhere in between. I'm somewhere between, you, are, you know, Mac, uh, Matthew McConaughey, you know, Dan Sass, to, uh, you know, um, Peter Sellers in, in The Pig Panther. Bonjour, I am Inspector Peter Sellers. So I'm somewhere in between. <laughs> he is. He's somewhere in between. We just don't know where. <laughs> hey, I just want to mention, uh, so you, may, you guys may have heard that I'm doing a workshop next month, at the end of next month, in beautiful Rome, Italy. I have one spot left in that workshop. Like, I sold 11 spots in one day. I have one spot left. Do you want to come with me to Rome? That's my dream, going to Rome. I actually was in Rome with you. and, and You were and, in Rome with me. I was in Rome for your photo shop. Yeah. Photo world. Photo walk. Hey. Uh, and you were with Mimo. 
I was with, yeah. One of the greatest black and white lone exposure artists on the planet. Yeah, so that's who I'm doing the workshop with, Mimo Madani and I. And, and Mimo's class came out this last week. Oh, my God. It's so cool. Oh, and I he, learned so much. Like, he right? is the king of super long, like, I'm talking six to ten minute exposure. I had no idea that you could do that to start oh. with. And, uh, you know, and I love how he creates the photo with even putting the water in the foreground and, oh. He's awesome, and he's going to be co-teaching the class with me. He's going to be showing you how to all of his stuff, all of his post-processing, all of his black and white stuff. He's showing all of it. Anyway, I got a little video clip that explains the Rome. Now, this is only only one person can take this. We literally, <laughs> I have one spot left. So one person, hopefully someone watching right now, will grab that last spot and come with me to Rome next month. So I'm going to play this little clip that explains the workshop. So check it out, and then I'll tell you how to how to do it, how to get on board. Hi everybody, Scott Kelby here and I want to invite you to an unforgettable experience this September, okay? Here it is. It's you, it's me, and we're in one of the most fascinating and photogenic cities in the world, incredible Rome, Italy. We're there for a four-day hands-on travel photography workshop and it is going to be awesome. We're going to shoot a lot, you're going to learn a lot, you're going to do a lot of post-processing, we're going to eat a lot, it's going to be incredible. Now, best of all, I'm joined once again by my very special guest, long exposure photography expert, the black and white photography master and one of the most fun and helpful instructors anywhere, Kelby One instructor, Mimo Madani. Besides being a great teacher and photographer, Mimo lives in Italy, and of course he speaks fluent Italian, which will come in very handy if we get arrested during the workshop. <laughs> well, that's very unlikely, but hey, you never know. Anyway, Mimo has a gift for finding those amazing secret little locations that few photographers even know about. We'll be hitting all of his favorites in Rome and during the workshop, we'll be seeing it all. The fountains, the architecture, the history, the statues, the gardens, Rome literally has it all. Did I, did I mention the food? Yes, there's amazing food as well. We'll be having plenty of it. It's gonna be a carb fiesta. Anyway, during the workshop, we'll be getting up early, staying up late, we're shooting sunrise, sunset, and then we'll be in the classroom in the afternoon. This is a very special workshop and we want to keep it intimate. So it's limited to just 12 people and I want you to be one of them. It's going to be an unforgettable, epic experience and you just got to be there. You're going to come home with some amazing images. You'll learn lots of techniques, you'll make new friends, and you're going to have the best time of your life. So come and join Mimo and me for a travel photography workshop, The Classical Beauty of Rome. It's September 21st through 24th, 2018. Remember, space is very limited, so if you want to go, go reserve your seat right now. Click the link below, sign up, and then I'll be seeing you in Rome, Italy. Ciao, Bella. So that's it. I'm, I'm hoping that somebody out there watching today will grab that last spot and uh, we're, it, it includes your accommodations and we have a great hotel. It's going to be our home base for the workshop. We're going to be shooting a lot. We're going to be eating a lot. We're going to have so much fun and it's with Mimo Madani. And, and you've done workshops with Mimo. Is he the greatest He's amazing. To, I did one in Warm with, with him. Yeah, years in ago. Rome. And he was just, he knows the place. Like, he's going to take you to places you would never find by yourself. Angles, photos you would never get. I mean, that's so smart to get such a local guy. Yeah, he's found this place in Rome he calls the Colosseum. <laughs> no, anyway. <laughs> well, he but, knows how to shoot the Colosseum at the right time of the yes, day. Yes, he I does. You. Yes. He's, like, with fact, the sunrise right on the side. I got an email from him this morning about that very topic. He told me something I did not know. But anyway, can I show you something on my screen? This is weird. So take a look at the shot on screen. See this shot? That was the shot from the start of the, of the yeah, video. One of the nicest I've right. seen of the, uh, the um, what's the name of that? That is the Trevi Fountain, Trevi right? Fountain. Yeah. Okay. And our hotel is within walking distance. We are, we are like just two minutes or three minutes from this fountain. We're right around the corner. So here's the thing. You were with me when I took this shot. Actually, yes. Right. Now, this is three, crazy. Three, four years ago, yeah. Yeah. So this is crazy. I do not have a shot of this fountain straight on like that. 
So I, I simply don't. I don't know how. Be well, it's because. Maybe we, because we there's 1,000 people in front yeah, of it? Yeah, <laughs> we were there at 1.30 in the morning, and there was hundreds and hundreds of people. Crazy. Like, and all they want to do is they get a selfie. Every single person walks in front of that fountain and gets a selfie. <laughs> you putting up a tripod there is like, forget it. <laughs> so I never was able to get a shot in front. So how did I get this shot for the... For, for this video. Did you go buy a stock photo, Scott? No. No, I didn't. Ready? Here's, here's the shot. I straightened that shot in Photoshop. That's so, so cool. Yeah, you took it from the side, I remember. I did. I, I literally went into lens correction. I'll just show you briefly what I did. I went into lens correction. And this is, this is a lot of Photoshop magic. <laughs> I went into lens correction over here. Oh, no, it's up here. I'm, I'm used to working in Lightroom. Sorry. Yeah, me too. And I went here, and I did the horizontal. Uh, it's weird. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong screen. I need to look at my screen here. I'm looking across the room at the big monitor. And I straightened it this way, oh and God. then I rotated it. And then, I mean, I just kept straightening it oh, and moving that's, that's it. That's unbelievable. And, and until I finally got it, and it took a, it took a few minutes. And I like how you took out some of the yellows in the water, and you know. Yeah, I did. I desaturated it, and all because it because yeah, the, it all the reflection. Funky. That's pretty cool. But but anyway, that's what I finally did to get this. And then once I kind of got it straight, I mean, it, it needed some flipping and all kinds of other stuff. Then I used scale to get more of the sky back in. Yeah. And then I cropped it square. I mean, but anyway, that's how I got that shot because that's I never was right in now you you got shots in front but you were up higher shooting i was trying to shoot down low and i didn't publish any of it because i didn't like uh, what we got that night but you nailed it yeah well i, I wouldn't say that i nailed it i i kind of made lemons out of lemonade or whatever that lemony <laughs> thing is anyway but hopefully somebody watching that somebody out there someone out there will come and take that last spot and join me next month and mimo in rome we will have a a time you'll never forget learning travel photography so there we go. Join me in beautiful Rome. All right. And we're going to go to my favorite restaurant in the whole oh, the one we wide went to. world. That small street? M yep. Mimi Coco. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. How oh, good yes. is that restaurant? Yes. I. Amazing. <laughs> it's crazy. Amazing. I, I mean, I love the whole. It's like a little walking street where you have a yep. lot of small restaurants. It only seats like 24 people. And yeah. it's a very, very small oh. restaurant. But it is. <laughs> uh, a guy told me about it at one of my seminars in Dallas. And he said, it's the best restaurant in Rome. And I'm like, oh, sure it is. Yeah. And I ate there. And I'm like, this is the best <laughs> restaurant in Rome. Hey, we got some friends out there, including all the way from, speaking of Mumbai, India, Unmesh hey, in the house. Unmesh. Bonjour. Bonjour, Unmesh. <laughs> I don't know why we're saying bonjour because he's in. Indian, not French, but, but either way. Yeah. Unmesh, good to have you here, buddy. Mark Heaps is here. Great bass player. Were you at the party at Photoshop World? Yeah. Mark was playing bass. Oh. That dude can play. That's right. It's, it's not enough that he's a Photoshop wizard, but he's a really good bass player. Margaret's <laughs> here from St. Bernard Hospital in Chicago. All right. And Dennis is watching us from Port Jefferson, Long Island. He says, thank you for making me a better Lightroom user. All right. Let's let's go and look. You've got a, another. These yeah. are another of the ten things that screw up photos. Yes. So just to answer your question, yes, I do use a platy pod, which you have over there, and oh, I use yes. that's that one of our giveaways. I used today. it a lot in New York, actually. Uh, in uh, in New York, you have a lot of hotels that have amazing views with terrace, but tripod are not allowed, and I use that all the time. So in my New York book, there's about ten or twenty shots that I use use this thing. And nobody stops you the platy pod. Nobody. They don't care. They're like, you don't even know what that is. And you know what? We're going to give away the ultra and the larger one, which I don't have right here, but it's floating around. My and new Lightroom book, which is about one week from hitting bookstores, it's already available in Kindle, and it is the uh, it is the number one new photography book on Amazon. <laughs> it, even though it's a week away, it's still here. It's it's one of my most popular Lightroom books ever. It was. My last version of this was went to press seven times. It was reprinted seven times. Wow. And this is the new version based on Lightroom Classic. The latest stuff, all the profile stuff here. We're going to give one of those away. And two more things. Pretty fabulous, by the way, I might add, which are a $50 gift card to Lens Pro to go. So next time you're going to do something, you can rent a lens or a body or whatever. And this is awesome right here. Victoria Pavlov, digital artist, Photoshop world instructor, and just one of the coolest people on the planet. Victoria is an amazing digital artist. She will give you a one-hour, one-on-one Skype lesson. Right? That's Seriously. Her. Serge is thinking, how can I do that? How can I start giving lessons, said Serge from <laughs> yeah. France. 
Because he's in France, but she's in Atlanta. It's not so. It's not quite as like I'm in France. But you live in L.A. too. You have homes in both places. Yes, I home. I'm ten year, ten months in L.A. and oh, nine months in L.A. and three months everywhere else in the world. All right. So nine months, and then he moves around. All right. We have to take a break. But when we come back, I, yeah, I we still a, have a few more. Got a couple of cool stuff to show you when you come Can back. Can it really be time for a break? Didn't we just take a break? <laughs> I hate all these breaks. But stay tuned. You're going to love this. <laughs> Hi there. This is Unmesh from Pix Imperfect, jam-packed with powerful tricks and techniques in this class. We will let Photoshop amaze you. We will learn the fundamental tools in such a way never imagined. In this class, we will not only learn stuff which is mind-blowing, but also at the same time, we will learn stuff which you wished was easier and will make it as simple as ABC. If you ever wanted to learn some tips and tricks that would revolutionize your workflow and that you can actually apply and also how they actually work so that you can apply it in your own way, this class is just the one for you. This is Unmesh Dinda. Join me on my latest class, jaw-dropping tricks and techniques in Photoshop, only on kelby1.com. Hi everyone, my name is Mimo Meidani. I'm a long exposure photographer and welcome to Venice. Today in our class, I'm gonna teach you the long exposure. In order to do that, we need to work on the filters, how to set the filters, how to set the camera, how to use our remote control, how to compose and all of that. And in the end, I'm gonna go to my Lightroom and Photoshop to teach you how to do the best editing with the black and white Lightroom and Photoshop. Come check out my class on long exposure photography exclusively at kelby1.com. Well, hi everybody, Scott Kelby here, and I want to tell you about my latest book. It is a big, big update to one of my best selling books ever. It's called, How Do I Do That in Lightroom Classic? Now, when you're past the beginner stage of Lightroom, and sometimes you just need to know how to do a particular thing, but you need to know how to do it right now, well, that's what this book is all about. You turn to the page, it tells you how to do just that one thing, and you're done. Boom, that's it. Having the answers you need right at your fingertips anytime is amazingly helpful, and it's a huge time saver. So I hope you will go check out my brand new book. It's called, How Do I Do That in a Lightroom Class? This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. That last guy that was just on, I could listen to him all day. In fact, I do listen to him, sadly, <laughs> all day. How about seeing Unmesh in there? Yes. And Mimo? So cool. Yeah, they're really Two cool people. Two awesome, awesome guys, and we're, we're honored to have them as Kelby One instructors. All right, Serge, you got a good one for us. What do you got? I got a good one for you. So it's, um, here's the thing is, this is one of uh, a photo I really like I shot in, uh, in Amiens. Amiens is like a medieval town. And I want to show you something. So a lot of time in my workflow, I bring down the highlights, I open up the shadows, and then I rebalance by crushing the blacks and doing the whites and then maybe lowering the exposure. But what I see is uh, a lot of people, for first, let's talk, there's two, two things here. Let's talk about the highlights. The thing is, sometimes when you bring down the highlights too strong, you see a lot of details in the, in the sky, which is sometimes absolutely not natural. Sometimes you're better off backing up the highlights and giving a little glow there than seeing like the, like I'll show you on this photo, it's like it's an extreme example, but that's what happened when you bring down the highlights and that does, that does not do well on a print, you know, because you, it you know, looks you, muddy. It looks muddy. You're yeah. better off having a, a yep. real glow uh, you know, overall than having like all the details around the sun. Okay, so that's one thing. But the other thing is uh, too much contrast, uh, too much clarity on the, on the clouds. So Ooh, it, yeah. it's the good old HDR, you know, let me add a it bit of- It looks like HDR, open up the shadows. Yeah, you know, it's just like, and let me add a bit of contrast there, or even, you know, some people add sharpness and some people, and the thing is, uh, clouds are meant to be pu puffy. You know, yeah, they're they not don't made look good with with clarity. And uh, yeah, and not talking about like adding overall clarity on top of it. You know, but it could be interesting to leave a bit of clarity here on, yes. on, on you know on the village and and have. That's what I was saying earlier. Which is, let me just correct this in one sec. I'm just going to reset this. Um, 
and go out of this tool. I'm not used to the resolution of this, yeah. So shadows, highlights, blacks, you know, whites, maybe not shadows so much, not a highlight so much, and you know, a bit of contrast. And what I actually do, I actually go the reverse. I will. So in Lightroom, if you take exposure, for example, it's going to put all your sliders onto zero except exposure. I'm going to like lower a little bit exposure, but I will actually add minus clarity. I'm actually going to diffuse the sky instead of having this HDR look. And then I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to go to clarity and I'm going to put clarity eventually here on, you know, on the old right. good, you know. And now I have a contrast between clarity and diffused. You know, contrast is not just about colors and light, it's also about sharpness. It's a little similar to what you show, but the quantity of like overprocessed sky that I see, or you know, where you can see too much of the highlights or too much the idea effect. I I'm a huge fan of Eric Almas. Okay. Oh, Eric is amazing. I'm a huge fan, and Me that's too. that's how I realized the mistake. If you check out his work, all these skies are super diffused, and 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 whenever there's a house, it's super sharp. And he really plays. I actually did this tutorial. He really plays, you know, against diffused, against, and it gives, you know, because the one thing that's going to give away that you overprocess your photo is HDR looking type of clouds, you know, or clarity or over sharp. Clouds are not meant to be sharp. That's the nature of clouds. They are puffy. They, you know. They are puffy. You know what? There's your tweet of the week. Clouds, clouds. aren't meant to be sharp. They're they were puffy. not born for that. They're not born for that. They're puffy. One of my things that I was on my list, so I'll just, I'm going to use your example to go to my list, okay. is when you have clouds that are, uh, they have a drop shadow. Like when you put on too much clarity, one of the ways you know that you've put on too much clarity is things start to get a glow. Yeah. And and it on clouds it is a dark blow it is a dark glow, mm. and it starts to become like a drop it looks like a drop shadow. It's the same thing with HDR. HDR will give your clouds a drop shadow. What's it casting a shadow on? It's a cloud in the sky. Mm. It, there's nothing to cast a shadow on. Yeah. So it, it it looks very very unrealistic. So mine was going to be along the lines of yours, which is. Fake looking skies make the whole picture look fake. Yeah. Sky is, I think, is the harder thing. It's the one thing where, you see, I don't want people to look at my photos and say, oh, you're good at Photoshop as the first reaction to right. my photos. I want people to say, what? What a beautiful city of Amiens or, you know. And so, and sky is the one element that if you mess that up either in the U or in the over sharpness, that's yep. going to give away that you use the filter. Everybody has all where the filters. Where is that, by the way? Huh? Where is that? This is Amiens. It's north of France. North of very, very close to Normandy. I was shooting Normandy. It's a funny story. I was in Normandy trying to shoot the Normandy beach, and it was really bad weather, and I, and I was driving back, and we just stayed it for dinner. I'd never been in my life, and I'm having dinner with my family in this restaurant, and I see this unbelievable sunset. I'm like, just eat, and I'll eat later, and I just went around <laughs> and took photos, and they were like, what? what? You know, you got to, again, catch the light when it happens. All right. Hey, uh, Wim, Wim wants to know, can we buy the platypus in Europe? You'd have to buy the platypus actually at a zoo. <laughs> you can buy the platypod. So, you know, uh, there is a company that is going to be just, I think they'll have their stock in two weeks in, in the UK. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get their name for you. Give me, give me one second. You can buy it on Amazon or anywhere. No, No, it's hard to get. Let me, hold on. I'm gonna, I have to look it up. I just heard about it today. And I have to look on my phone. I know it sounds stupid, but... Uh, I, I think I got a text about it. No, I got an email about it. Give me one second. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't make a sound. And uh, let's say Capture Photographic Limited, uh, uh, Limited, which will be the official UK distributor for Platypod. So within a couple of weeks, they're going to have their stock. We'll have next week on the grid. We'll have a link to where uh, you can find them and etc. But uh, so there is going to be a UK distributor and hopefully a European distributor soon. But we know. Yeah, that what a cool trick. Oh, it's, it's the greatest. All right. I Next. have it all the time in my bag. All the time. I have oh, a yeah. little pocket for it. So do I. Yeah. Okay. Next. Crooked horizon lines. Oh. One of the easiest things to fix and one of the biggest problems I see. Where literally, all you got, how can you not see it? Like, people send me the images just like they do you all the time. And I'm like, how did you not see? I mean, you're... Like you have a boat, and like a boat would ah, off the edge of the earth because it's a flat earth. Oh. 
Well, or you could go all the way and really have a crooked line, like because that's the style you're going for. That's different. That's yeah. the Dutch treatment. If you want to oh. do that, that's one thing. Frank Dorhoff knows all about that. Okay. Yes, he does. Hey, uh, <laughs> Rolf says, bonjour, Serge, and then some words in French. Bien, good, you're on the grid. It says, bien, oh. tu es sur the grid. Bonjour, Rolf. Wow, that's so convincing. All right, <laughs> so crooked. That's, that's the easiest darn thing to fix. So we have the too much clarity in the sky, too much sharpness in the sky. We have drop shadows in the sky. You can make a lot of mistakes in the sky. But did you guys catch something? Because this is something I teach on my Lightroom tour that he does, is to bring back that sky, it's, it's a balancing act. You're lowering the exposure to make the sky look great, and then you're opening up the shadows to like make the detail come out. It, it works surprisingly well. Yeah. All right, you have another image for us? Uh, not really, but I have a trick I want to show you. Ooh, a trick's good. We like tricks. Yeah, which, so, so the other one, it's a very popular one. So when you make a gradient, uh, you know, I'm on clarity, this way it looks awful, but when you're on exposure and you lower the exposure, mm -hmm. like, like, I'm going to overdo it. You know, and you have something like this. Now it's dark, and back in the day, I used to use, you know, uh, I, I see that a lot on photos where something is sticking out, and you can tell that the, the, and I see that a lot in movies too, you know, because in movies they don't have the tools that they have it like in Nitrum. But so something is sticking out, and it's darker, you can tell yeah. that the sky has to be darker. But there's this amazing new tool, Ooh. Range Mask Off Luminance, which, if you hold on the option key, you can even see it, creates a mask. and as any mask in Photoshop, black conceals and white reveals. So if my statues are black and my white is sky is is white, then this whole sky now is only going to influence the sky and not the and statue not anymore. The statue. And that's that's a very very common mistake I see also. That uh, is in both Photoshop, uh, in Camera Raw, and in Lightroom. Yes, it's everywhere. This was a game changer for me when they added that. I was like, thank you, Lightroom, thank you, Adobe. Because I used to mask it out with a brush. Uh, you know, especially like you're in Yosemite, you have that one tree or that lonely tree, you want to make the sky darker. I mean, you know, that, that's an okay example, but I have some of them on my photos was like, ooh. All right, I have two last ones, we gotta go. Okay. One second, I wanna talk about. By the way, I wanted to invite people to my workshops because Do once, you, you know, you probably won't be able to make. You know, because by now there's about 10 people already on the waiting list of the Rome workshop. But believe it, I will be doing a workshop this year. I've got two in Los Angeles, and I've got one in uh, Florence, Tuscany. Two days in Florence, two days in Tuscany. Tuscany. And then I got one in Paris for four days also. And uh, Mimo is probably going to be with me also on the one in Florence. You can find out all about it on my website, photosearch.com, photosearch.com, section workshop. And, all right. Uh, voila. And we might do one workshop together one day. Yes, we are talking about. We talked about in it Paris. yesterday. I would in be so ah. That'd be so nice. I can't think of being in Paris without you. I was on your photo walk in Paris. Yes, and I was on, on your. I was on your I holidays know. in Paris. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we went to Normandy, by the way, together. Yes. Yeah. yeah we he, did. I got to see Mont Saint Michel. I had been living for forty-four years by now in France and never been to Mont Saint Michel. And Four hours from his house. From uh, like, yeah. Are you kidding me? And and I don't regret it. I've been there ten times since. We almost died. That's true. Of uh, of the quicksand. Quicksand. That's almost right. Almost died. I told that story many times. <laughs> it Serge was so and funny. I almost like, died. At one point, Scott, I'm not kidding, was walking, and it, can you imagine like over thirty feet, the entire sand going like this. Yep. And uh, I put but, my tripod down and it starts going and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, Serge, my tripod's moving. He's like, it's not just your tripod. The tripod <laughs> and I are going over. And when you go down even just a little way, you just can't get out. Yeah. yeah. It's, and people, people literally die there because when the, when the, when the tide comes in, it comes in like a horse, yeah. like running. I mean, it just, and a woman just died there uh, recently in yeah. my last year or so. Yeah, so don't do like we did, like go with a guy. Now I'm going yeah, with a guy. You have to go with somebody, yeah. We kind of went rogue and... No, no, no. We did go rogue. All right, I have three. I'm going to tell you them real quick because these are the last three to wrap us up. Okay. Look at my screen here. Banding in the sky. Oh, my God. So this is when you've processed it to death and you wind up with these, this banding. No, I have no idea how to correct that. Okay, so there, there actually is a way to hide it, especially in print. It works brilliantly in print. Go to the filter menu, to noise, add noise, and the, the, you're going to add four pixels of Gaussian, turn on Gaussian, and monochromatic noise. You will see it on your screen. Like, you'll see it like, oh, no, there's noise all over my photo. It disappears in print, and it hides the banding. 
Like you cannot believe it is. It is. But it doesn't work for screen. Like if you want to put it on. No, it does media. not work on. No. So what you need to do is this happens a lot when you're working with an eight bit photo. Yeah. So if you're if you're working your your image, for, so you started with a raw photo, and then you, if now it's eight bit, and you'll see this. Go back to the original sixteen bit image, and chances are it will not be banding. Yeah. This often happens when you go from when you when you started off with a raw photo that is sixteen by nature, and at some point you used a plug-in or something, went to eight, and now you get this banding. That's number one. Uh, number two is uh, too much vibrancy. Now, there really? is, wh while we, this is where some people just over, it's usually with HDRs. They make their HDRs too colorful. It's kind of what Serge said earlier, where you're, you're introducing colors that aren't really what you would see in real life. Mm. The public loves very vibrant photos. But you can get to a point where even the public goes, that just looks weird. <laughs> so the public likes more vibrancy than most photographers will, will, will do. <laughs> like we're very careful about not to make things too vibrant. So, and you can go back on me with a camera shot anytime. Thank you. So I can look up the last one. There was the third one. And that was, uh, where was it? Oh, this is another one that kills a lot of shots. And it's something you need to fix in post that you're not doing. Bright stuff in the background. So you have a, a portrait or whatever, and in the oh, background, yeah. like if you were looking at the grid set, see that? Th <laughs> see that, right? Where, yeah. How do I aim at that? Yeah. There. See that light right there? If this was a photograph, your eye would be drawn to that one and that one up there and that one over there. Yeah. Those are things that you need to take care of and get rid of. It draws your eye. He mentioned earlier, like when you have these bright areas, your eye is drawn to it. How many things in the background? Backgrounds kill more shots than almost most foregrounds. Yeah. That's, for example, on this photo, just to uh, give an example of what Scott just said, the star is this is um, a village in, a, in Provence, a beautiful village. It's called Gord. 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 And so what I usually do is I would do like a little filter here, go to exposure and lower the exposure because I don't want people to, this was kind of like just a little foreground thing. The star of the photo is this unbelievable blue hour in this unbelievable village, you know. So you really have to, I, I will. Perfectly oh, done. You know, I would over, you know, also even close that. I want people to look inside. I would maybe even use a brush and diffuse the color even more, you know. Uh, add a bit of exposure, maybe add a bit of minus but clarity. But that's exactly what I'm talking about. Where exactly. you're, con you're leading their eye and making sure that they're not distracted by those rocks in the foreground. Yeah. Much better. See, you know, that's and, perfect. And I, I, I want people to, you know, uh, before and then after. So anyway, I could spend more time, but you get the idea. You I have, idea. you direct the attention of the, viewer, of the of the viewer, you know, with the dodge and burn. And um, we, voilà. we. That's French, super. by the way. It is super. C'est fou. C'est okay. génial. So um, one last thing before we go. You want to know where to go win the stuff? Go to kelby1.com slash contest and tell us what you want to win. Do you want to win the one hour with Victoria? That's crazy. One hour with Victoria. I know. She does like a one-on-one -on -one private online class. This is Just so cool. Her. This I know. is so she's cool. She's the best. And she's, she's brilliant. Or the Lens Pro to Go gift card, the Platypod Small, which is called the Ultra, the Platypod Large, which is the large one, or Scott's Lightroom book. So any one of those, just tell us what you want to win, and we'll send you them wherever you are in the world because we love you. Okay, last thing. So Friday, this Friday, here at our headquarters in Tampa, Florida, we are doing a gallery opening. We're feature featuring uh, the work of an amazing uh, landscape artist from Canada. So he's a Canadian, I think, uh, IT guy in Canada. And uh, I saw some of the photos. It's unbelievable. Like he flies or whatever. He uh, goes to places. Yeah, like he takes helicopters out to these amazing places and stuff. But I, I want to mention, of course, that if you're anywhere in the Florida area and you would like to come, it is a wine and cheese reception. It's free. You can get free beer. No, not free beer. Free wine. It's booze. Free booze. Friday <laughs> night. It's a booze thing. And there's cheese, so you don't, you know, just have that. Anyway, it's this Friday night, and you can, if you're a Kelby One member, look in your email. You've already been sent an invite, and we'd love for you to come and join us. There's a couple spots left if you want to come, but it's free. It's free. It's wine. It's cheese. It's a blast. And Kelby One is I'll be an amazing there. place. And thank you, thank you. Oh, you'll be there. You'll be back from Washington. Oh, yeah, I'm flying back from Washington to be there for <laughs> like it. Yeah, touching absolutely. and coming back. Yep, touching, coming back. Uh, the other thing is, 
everybody talks about the exposure system, which is from Bay Photo. It's the way the images are printed and mounted. Uh, I did a video at Photoshop World. They were at Photoshop World, and I went by their booth, and I did an interview, and they showed how the whole thing works. We actually built them, like right there on the thing. If you're a Kelby One member, go to the Kelby One Insider blog. How could the public get, to, you, the public can get to that blog, can't they? How does the public get to that blog? Anybody know? Well, yeah, sign up for a free membership. You can get to the blog. Uh, there's a free membership. No credit card, no commitments, no nothing. Just go to kelby1.com, sign up for the free membership, and you'll have access to the Kelby One Insider blog. And I put the video there, and when you see how the system works, it's going to blow your mind. Yeah, so it's, I, and yeah. I'll put, I'm going to run on my blog, too, uh, maybe Friday. And I've been a Kelby One member for over, I mean, even before it started, it was called NAPP. I was a member for many, many years. It's been eight to 10 years I've been a member. It's how I learned photography. Now I'm teaching today, but I learned everything from him. Well, thank you, Serge. And there, uh, there you go. That's me doing the thing. And that's showing some of the prints on the wall and all. Anyway, it's over on the Kelby One Insider blog where he put all kinds of stuff like daily. Anyway, thank you guys. Serge, thank you so much for being on the show. Cool. Where can people go learn more about you? Photosurge.com is my website. Photosurge.com. And people come to my workshop, I will sign the book and offer uh, the, uh, the book. And, Signed. And I hope I'll see one of you that are watching in Rome next month. We'll be you and me hanging out, drinking <laughs> Diet Coke. No, Coke Light. Coke Light. Well, they have Coke zero Coke, Coke though in Europe. Yeah, zero Coke That's is That's the nice, big thing. But we call it Coke Zero, but sure. Zero Coke is okay, good. Okay, sorry. Coke Zero. Anyway, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you okay. so much for being thank on the show. Thank you, for always, having me. Always a pleasure. And uh, you were here doing some classes? Yes, I got two classes coming up. One, how to grow your YouTube channel. You know, now, how do you go from zero to half a million subscribers? Wait a minute. All revealed. How do you do... Are you sure you're qualified for this? Do you have enough YouTube subscribers? Half a million. Half a million. That's ridiculous. And what's your other class? The other class is black and white then and now. It's all about dodge and burning and how Ansel Adam used to do it and how, or many great masters used to do it, and how you can do that in live turn today. Son of a gun. Looking forward to seeing them both. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all to my crew here. And Thank Christina you. on the uh, moderation. <laughs> and snack. She gave me two thumbs up. That's pretty good. Two <laughs> thumbs up. And uh, anything French to say as we go? Merci beaucoup de m'avoir, Scott. C'est toujours un plaisir d'être avec toi. What he said. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>